I've just zone one it. I say zone one, I mean, I can't physically move my legs any faster. I am starting to believe, guys, this is gonna be one awesome challenge. I'm trying to put a brave face on it, but I am broken. The biggest challenge I'm gonna face in this video is squeezing in this epic mammoth ride into a shortish YouTube video, but trust me when I say, you're gonna wanna stick around until the end as it doesn't finish as well as it starts. Of course it doesn't end as well as it starts. I'm attempting to ride the Uber Pretzel on Zwift. 128 kilometers with well over 2,000 meters of climbing. Widely regarded as the hardest route on Zwift to complete. I don't want to stick around until the end, let alone you. Uh, right, okay. Hi guys and welcome to this week's video. So, this one's going to be a different Zwift video. Now, I googled recently what the hardest ride is on Zwift and overwhelmingly it came back as the Uber Pretzel. The reason why I'm doing this, I've got a marathon coming up in a few weeks. I'm supposed to be outside. Today is a Sunday. I'm supposed to be outside run training. However, it's raining and I don't really fancy going out and running in the rain. So I thought rather than do a long run, I'm going to do a long ride. And what could be better than 128k, nearly 129k, nearly 130k of Watopia. I've got my water I've got my electrolytes, I've got my energy gels that I need to practice with and then probably at halfway I'm gonna have someone bring me a sandwich and I'll just eat a sandwich on the bike. That's the plan. Let's do this. Let's get on the bike. My current Zwifting routine is race, race again and then race some more. So the whole point of this video is to get away from just racing on Zwift. Okay, so we're off now, we're off and running a 129k adventure. So the plan is, I haven't got many tactics other than just try and stay as consistent as possible. I'm not going for a PB because I haven't got a PB on Uber Pretzel. So anytime I do today, even if it takes me a week, which it won't, I'm gonna do it in one hit. Even if it takes me ages, it's gonna be a PR. On my last video and pretty much on every Zwift video I ever upload, so all of my indoor cycling videos, I get loads of people in the comments telling me to ride slow for longer. So so zone two for the win. Apparently zone two is gonna get me my first Cat C win or my first 180 to 350. So I'm gonna keep calling them Cat C. So here we are, the Uber Pretzel. This is the first time I'm doing the Uber Pretzel. However, I am gonna change my bike before each of the climbs. My bib shorts are really uncomfortable at the moment. You know, I'm on the Felt AR at the moment, which is a normal racing bike. I've got racing wheels. One of the reasons I want to do this, other than the fact that I needed to get in a long endurance event today, I've had a few comments on my video that to help my racing and help my racing legs, that I need to do some zone one and two training. There's no better zone two training than being absolutely kiboshed at the end of a huge massive effort like this. As I've already said at the beginning of this video, the Uber Pretzel is exactly 128.3 kilometers of indoor cycling, indoor Sufferfest, and it includes the Epic Com, the Radio Tower, the Volcano Com, and of course my favorite Zwift related pixelated mountain, Alp de Zwift. Keep going, Ryan! Keep going! Oh, that comes at the end of the ride. They've saved the best till last. So other than that, I've got no agenda for this ride, other than it being a good calorie burning fitness exercise and to get in some zone two training. I should say now for the record that my training difficulty is set to 60%. So this is the start of the Epic Com. I'm gonna change my bike. Frame is gonna be the Trekamonda and then wheels, Milstein, lightweight. I think I might have had them selected already. Means I've been racing with the Minnensteins, as you do. I have no idea what I'm doing, but this I'm hoping will shave off some time and reduce some resistance on the road surface. And more importantly, it will help me learn more about the aero, road resistance, rolling resistance, climbing weight stuff these in-game avatar frames and wheels contribute to or affect. So basically my tactic here with the bike frame and wheels is trial and error, my favorite way to learn. I'm also hopeful it will be something to distract me from the pain my backside is about to endure. So as you can see there's not a lot of red in this ride. I only stand out the saddle every now and then just to give my legs a break. It's something to do 
along this really long route other than just focus on the screen and ensure that my cadence stays as high as I can make it. It gives me something to focus on. It also gives my backside a break that I wanna keep it in the blue and green. So no pushing. My aim is to practice my cadence, improve my nutritional intake that allows me to complete big challenges like this and burn a few calories, contributing towards my current weight loss plan, which I'm currently focused on. I wanna get below 90 kg by Christmas. So that's, I've kind of plateaued a little and it just seems to be staying pretty much almost exactly on 92 kg all the time, every time I weigh myself. I've got to the point where I'm now weighing myself on a daily basis, which is a really bad habit to have. Anyway, most importantly, the point of this ride is to focus on this being a slow ride for a really long time in the hope that rides like this help my overall racing prowess. I also really want that Tron bike guys. I'm over 18,000 meters from unlocking it. The longest side quest in the history of computer games. Probably the hardest side quest. When I eventually do get that Tron bike it better flipping give me another 200 watts otherwise I want a refund. Just about to go into the castle. I like this bit. To save anyone asking in the comments, I am 92 kg on the nose. My weight seems to be going down. I am working currently to a calorie deficit, which makes doing stuff like this really hard. Now I will say, don't worry, I have eaten loads of food. calories to take on this challenge and I've ensured that I've had enough to get this job done. I've ensured that I've had enough to at least get it started. I've eaten a bit more today. I've had a slightly larger breakfast than I would do normally but you know, carb heavy. And I've got a packet of crisps, good for replacing salt. And I also have electrolytes in one of my waters. And then I've got a liter of water. When I talk to camera, I lose concentration and my cadence drops. So I'm trying to keep my cadence as close to 90 as I can. Now I'm gonna interject and highlight the obvious elephant in the room. I know you've all spotted it. My cadence is really poor at this point and I'm already starting to look like I'm grinding. For some reason, 70 to 75 RPM is my comfort zone. It's where I gravitate to. And unless I really concentrate, and I mean really concentrate, so when I'm not talking to camera, my cadence significantly drops from the 90s, which is what I'm aiming for, to 75. We are still climbing the Epic Convert Tracy. I just bought me a carby sandwich. Eating while cycling is hard. It turns out that eating with a closed mouth and the need to breathe is significantly harder than I anticipated. I can't breathe and eat. To the point that I couldn't finish this tasty Tracy made snack. Downhill. Something I am not used to. I'm gonna save the other half of my sandwich for the downhill after the radio tower. Eating when climbing is a really bad idea. Just a, just a little bit of friendly neighborhood grinding just to get to the top. Cadence or a healthy high RPM number is something I am terrible at both in racing and especially in climbing. It's my kryptonite and something I need to work on if I'm gonna progress in Zwift or probably progress in general when it comes to cycling. Here's the top of the comm. How fast is that person walking? Christ. And that's the epic comm done. 39.29, here we go. Calm before the storm. We've just turned off for the radio tower. I'm just gonna spin my way up. I am not grinding. I can't fight the urge anymore. Uh, ah, ah. Well, I was trying to do a pagacha and he knocked my light off. I'd rather just go for a big long bike ride like this and just enjoy what I'm trying to do. And I get a buzz out of learning through my mistakes, um, which again is one of the reasons I'm making this video. I can see the top, this race. Ah, here we go guys, a bit of zone five. I'm gonna stop for a second to change the old bike rooney Right, frame, let's put the old felt AR and then wheels, here we go. Disc wheels on a, on a road bike. That should uh, appease the commenters. To be fair, and I have to say this, I have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about when it comes to bike frames, aero resistance, wheels, wheel resistance on the road. I mean, that's pretty obvious that I don't know what I'm talking about. But I think I read somewhere that the combination between the felt AR and having disc wheels, I think they're called disc wheels, isn't right or it's frowned upon. I'm gonna have a packet of crisps for the salt actually first. I'm gonna drink some water. I'm gonna move my mouth off cursor because that annoys me. I'm gonna eat my crisps to get the salt and I'm gonna eat the other half of my sandwich. Now that we're doing 921K downhill, I can actually eat it and breathe. 
This is a Super really good spot. I found it on iOverlander. Okay, guys, I've been riding on this gravel track for the last 3K. I'm just about to tick over or tick under 100K. I don't know if I've got a gravel bike. I have a mountain bike. I might put the mountain bike on, see if that helps. Wheels, I've only got one type, okay. Probably a ridiculous thing to do. Downhill, I'm fighting the resistance of the gravel. So I just wanna see if this makes any difference whatsoever. I don't own a gravel bike, I really should buy one. I know the surfaces make a huge difference. For some reason, this did feel wrong at the time, but I'm having fun. It's a distraction from the endurance event that I'm currently suffering through. The whole point of this is to turn my legs in a zone two ride for a really long time. That's basically the point of this. So messing my frame and wheels up probably isn't gonna really jeopardize that. And I'm completely justifying this decision by saying this. <laughs> but yeah, we're 300 meters from ticking under 100k so you know 100k left to go so with some of my favorite youtubers playing on my second screen snacks and sandwiches eaten two of the big climbs now under my belt and on a bike frame that's probably making me slower than it needs to i now have a long drawn out section between here and the alp to get through hopefully we'll hit on some tarmac and i can change the bike back to one that i know is the right bike rather than guessing but i'm having fun at the very least i'm having fun and that's all that matters right tarmac look as i said it i'm gonna switch bikes and we're gonna go for the felt ar we're gonna go for aero all right i'm gonna put youtube back on experience beautiful places like this does anyone else physically super tuck indoors to match their avatar or is it just me what is the position he's doing is it that yeah, that's the position. I'm sure, I'm sure it makes me faster. Guys, good news is we're fast approaching 90K. Looks like I'm back on gravel or sand. Probably should invest in a gravel bike. Does rain affect you in Zwift? Let's go a bit faster. See if I can't latch onto some kind of group. Ideally, I'd like to get a, a pacing robot, a robot pacer that suddenly pops up on screen. That'd be perfect. I mean, the good news is with the exception of the Alp, there's not a lot left to climb. I think we've got the volcano. Circling the bottom of the volcano, like a velociraptor, targeting its prey, and we are about to pounce. And I am pleased that YouTube doesn't have smell vision because it is smelling quite ripe in here. How much I'm sweating at the moment. And it's not even that warm today. It's actually quite a chilly day. It's quite blustery, raining, cold dreary outside and I'm absolutely sweating buckets with one of the reasons I've got so many electrolytes so you know obviously I've got the out I keep mentioning the out because it is very much playing on my mind looming in the distance not literally that's the radio tower I think I'm very mindful that I don't want my legs to give up I certainly don't want it giving up halfway up this is it start of the volcano com with uh, 86k still to go on this ride if I complete this course, it will officially be the furthest I've ever biked on a bike, at least indoors. Interestingly, unless the wheels completely fall off, and that has been known to happen both indoors and outdoors for me, then this ride won't be the longest in time distance. That current Ryan Condon record goes to my naive attempt to Everest. Something I will not be trying again for a very, very long time, or at least until I weigh less than 45 kgs, which is never, ever gonna happen. Hang on. My hair, my hair's gone crazy. I forgot to change my bike. Oh, 15 minutes. We're on the descent. I'm gonna eat or consume or drink. These out of all the energy gels, I'm not sponsored. Precision fuel. And this is the one that irritates me the least. I'm not sure if that's a good recommendation, but it's really not that bad. I probably could be maximizing on time efficiency by sprinting down here. This replaces the need to have to have a break to replenish, you know, food that I, I just can't eat when I'm cycling. And it also is a good reminder to get the electrolytes, the energy gels, you know, and any other food that I've got. Now at this point in the ride, I'm feeling really good. Legs feel fine. And more importantly, my backside, my posterior is fine. I say fine, like I'm not dying. Operation 
cycling slowly for a long time is going well. This zone two ride is a huge success so far. I'm enjoying it, but the hardest by far is still yet to come in the form of a 12K, 1000 meter climb up the Alp du Baptism of Bloody Fire. So in that vein of changing the bike, I'm gonna put on a TT frame or change my avatar's bike to a TT frame. This next decision is a doozy. Trigger warning incoming. TT aero, there we go. Wheels. I've got the best wheels. Now, obviously, if I hit any gradient between now <laughs> and Alpha Swift, then I'm going to be at a disadvantage. Obviously, I'm not going to get any draft, but I'm not riding with a group. I'm riding on my own. I'm going to trial it. Excuse the pun. Now, throughout the ride, I was half hopeful of picking up a pacing group or at the very least latching onto a group and have the draft benefit, something that will get me to where I need to be slightly faster with slightly less effort. It's also more enjoyable to ride along with others and not a lone ranger on my own, slowly TTing on the wrong bike frames for 130k, but so far not a single group has formed in front or behind me. Also, also, what is this weather swift? I'm cycling indoors because the weather outside is grim, gray and cloudy. At least give me fake sunshine on my fake bike ride. This is... This is one depressing ride. We've just ticked under 74K, and uh, yeah, that means that we're halfway. Pretty much just got a straight run now to the um, to out to Zwift. I'm gonna check Zwift hacks to see the route map for the Uber pretzel, and I wanna see how far I've got until I need to hit the out. So, so I've just checked Zwift Insider. We're over halfway. So obviously, even without the air, so even, I'm getting really tired. I'm struggling with my words. So even without the Alp, 73K is still no small feat to complete, which I'm TTing. There's a small bump before Alp to Zwift, nothing major, and then it finishes on Alp to Zwift. I don't think I have to come back down it, which I thought I did when I started. So I'm really pleased that I just checked that because that's cheered me up. But the fact that I now know that I've got to climb Alp to Zwift, but I don't have to come back down it, which is what I had to do on the Four Horsemen, has put a smile on my face. I'm making really small progress, so I'm just gonna change it back. So now I've got draft benefit. I could really do with latching onto someone as well. So we've just dropped under 70K left to go. Obviously the last 12K of that's gonna be Alpta Zwift. I don't know if I've mentioned, I've still got Alpta Zwift to climb. Have I mentioned that? Guys, guys, I've latched onto a group. Oh my God, finally. We've pretty much just got a flat run to the Alp. Have I mentioned? I remember, let me just turn this off a sec so I can tell a quick story. I remember being in Cat D and doing 33, 34, 35k and just thinking how unbelievably hard it was to keep up with everyone. And now I am 70 odd k into the Uber pretzel having already done some of Zwift's toughest climbs and I'm zone two in it. Unbelievable progress really. It just blows my mind occasionally. But anyway, I need to put the fan back on. Yeah, not far to go now. Well, I say <laughs> not far, 63K to be precise. Now, just quickly for the record, as I feel I need to bring my modesty back down to where it needs to be. For the record, I'm not saying here that I think I'm mustard. I'm simply saying that I'm seeing improvements, which is ultimately why I do these challenges. I can see small incremental gains that combined mean I can now attempt endurance rides like this, still weighing 92 kg. I know, I know, I still have a really long way to go to be smashing this, and I'm still watching this, expecting me to be making better decisions. Even me now, with post-editing hindsight, I know I should be making better decisions and future me, me now, is probably right but who cares? The whole point of this is to have some fun. I am significantly better, and by better, I mean faster, stronger, and lighter than I was this time last year. And if I have the same incremental growth that I had over the last 12 months, by this time next year, you'll see me chasing down Pagacha on Plateau du Bell. Sean's Elise. I think I've said that right. But until I get the call from Visma Lisa Bike, check me out with all the biking knowledge, until I get the call from Visma Lisa Bike, I will enjoy my slow bike rides up climbs in Zwift. I don't think that's going to happen. Okay guys, so complete transparency. I just had to stop because I needed to go to the toilet. I've also grabbed a couple of saurine bars. So I've only stopped for a few minutes. What is Zwift doing to me? 
It's raining again. Look at the sky. Crikey, it looks like outside. Actually, it's quite sunny outside. So I've decided to cycle inside because it was raining. It's now quite sunny and the sky looks quite clear and it's raining on Zwift. Why does Zwift have rain? It's depressing. This is a bloody long way. My toes are starting to feel a bit tingly. I've got a bit of numbness in my small toes. I'm still feeling okay though, which I'm scared to say. You know, ask me in 30K. I've managed to latch on to a small group here and not have to TT on my own, which has been a, a nice break. I'm happy just to be poodling along doing 30 plus. I will say that if you like my extensive cycling knowledge and obvious cycling prowess, then I have my very own podcast on my second YouTube channel, which is called Ryan Condon Unscripted, catchy name I know, where I chat about all things fitness, cycling, and running. If you fancy checking that out, link is in the description. It's great for those long Zwift rides or even the commute to work where you can just listen to me ramble on. I'm not selling it very well, but I have put a lot of effort into it, so please go and check it out for me. We are at 102 kilometers. We've passed the 100 kilometer mark. We have got just under 26K left to go, and I feel, touch wood, I don't want to jinx it, I feel okay. Famous last words. I'm also very pleased because I've done some good drafting, and of course, as I'm recording, I'm not doing any drafting at all. Okay, guys, I've just, I've just had to run downstairs really quickly because I'd run out of water and I also got some bread because I'm starving. Change bikes, menu, uh, Trekamonda and then the wheels are my lightweight melon style. Okay guys, the moment has come. We are here. This is the grand finale. This is the piece de resistance. This is a French site. How far have I done? 116 kilometers. I'm going to pop this while I don't have to concentrate too much. Bring my gear down. I'm going very, very slowly. Right. Right, that's my 90 day PR ghost shot off. I'm going to let that go. Yeah, this is a marathon, not a sprint up Alp to Zwift. I do like Alp to Zwift, just maybe not after 116.2 kilometers. Now I'm at the point with my Zwifting where I unfortunately cannot help but grind. When I initially started on Zwift and probably for the last year, I really wasn't bothered about stuff like that because grinding was the least of my problems. Okay guys, we're coming up to corner 21 and anyone that's watched any of my Alp to Zwift videos will know that corner 21 is by far the worst corner on out to Zwift. But I'm at a point now where my weight's coming down nicely, I'm getting stronger and stronger, my FTP is going up, I really need to stop sabotaging myself with low cadence. If you enjoy this video, I will say that I have other videos on my Patreon that are exclusive to people that support me on Patreon. If you're interested, as I recently put an out to Zwift attempt on there, where I attempted to get a new PR. Let me zoom in a bit. It is exactly seven o'clock at night. I've been cycling now for six hours and four minutes. I'm at corner seven. Uh, so we've got the long straight to six. I am broken. <sighs> this is pretty damn tough. I've got to be honest, my legs are done. My legs are done. I'm trying to put a brave face on it, but I am broken. It's so much climbing. I'm even grinding in gear one. My muscles here. What are these called? <laughs> I got brain fog. I'm so tired. Come on, Ryan. Come on, Ryan. Just get it done. As Dory says, just keep spinning. Things going on down here. Things don't belong to me anymore. I think they've detached. I occasionally have to get out the saddle, but then I feel my legs go into jelly. Fatigue, endurance, they're all my strengths. I'm pretty good at recovery so yeah my two biggest challenges is getting better at my nutrition so basically eating enough calories to get me through endurances like this and my bum oh guys i'm not finished i've still got 4k but why do i do stuff like this right we're just coming up to 100 minutes that's one hour and 40 minutes of climbing out to zwift I've just zone one it. I say zone one, I mean, I can't physically move my legs any faster. I am starting to believe, guys. I'm starting to believe. This is gonna be one awesome challenge overcome. That doesn't even make sense. I'm so tired. Look how long I've been going for. What does it say? Top right. Six hours and 36 minutes? Yeah. 
I started before you left. Are you crazy? My legs hurt quite a bit. Yeah, you smell quite a bit. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. Hang on, I've got to show you this. This guy has just come running past me. Running past me. We're doing 9% hill and he's just run past me. I can't have that. Okay, seems I can have that. My microphone battery now died and I didn't notice. So if the audio sounds different, less than 400 meters. It's because it's now coming out of my desk mic that's helpfully on the other side of the desk. So pretty much on the other side of the room. Come on, over the hill. This is the end of the Uber pretzel guys. I've done it. The hardest route on Zwift. 100% ah. complete and another hard challenge ticked off my bucket list. Route complete. The Uber pretzel. Done. What did I learn? I learned that cycling zone two for a long way hurts my bum. I need to eat more carbs. I need to eat closer to 100 grams of carb an hour, which I just didn't do. I've mentioned that already. I also know that my cadence tactics and my practice for cadence goes completely out the window when I get tired, which I need to stop allowing happen. Other than that, this was a fun way to spend a Sunday afternoon stroke evening because I was on the bike for a really long time. I'm not going back down. I am Romeo done. I am over, bravo out. I'm gonna go and lie on the shower floor and eat my body weight in rice and whatever else I put in it. Thank you for watching. There is no way I could have completed this back in May of last year. And I actually thought I was actually quite fit last May. Coming on Zwift has really shown me how far I had to come. Knowing that I can complete the Uber pretzel, completing it, regardless of time, speed or anything else, is fantastic. It makes me feel awesome. I just want to say, if you've got to this point in the video, a big, big thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe as that really helps me out. And it also helps my channel out. And I hope to see you in next week's video. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it because I need to come up with a video that beats this endurance event, but I'll give it a crack. So see you next week. Thanks for watching, guys.